Take this job and shove it. I ain't working here no more. Everybody's working for the weekend. Taking care of business every day. Now it's wow, 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 wow. Welcome to the world in a week. Working hard. Okay, you're listening to a special Christmas edition of the Working Lunch. I'm Jeff Turgeon. And uh, I'm Sean McGauley. And we're your hosts for this uh, for this show. As I mentioned, it's special Christmas Day edition. Wow. Uh, now, we're not coming to you live. Right, we're a couple days as, earlier. As dedicated as we are to the job, we, uh, we're we taping this, actually, uh, a couple weeks before Christmas. In Studio B at wonderful that's WCUW. That's right. We're, we're out of our normal studio. We're in the alternative studio, if you will, Studio B. Uh, and we are uh, very happy that we have access to uh, to the fine facilities here and have a, 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 an ability to uh, put together our production, even though our normal home in Studio yeah. A is is uh, is not available to yeah. us. Yeah, Troy and the staff here at WCW are very accommodating and like to give a quick shout out and thank you to him and, and his staff. He's been a, it's, it's just been a, a, a great job working with him. Uh, Judy Warren and, and Jessica Jackson, all the team uh, at uh, at WCW and the government uh, the government channel. Yeah, who always makes us look so fabulous. <laughs> right, right. So special Christmas edition show. Yeah. I think the I think the 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 question is, and again we're 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 coming to folks on the radio on Christmas Day. Ah, uh, right. So it's kind of like already happening, but. Since we're, we're since we are taping this a little bit ahead of time, are you done your shopping yet? Actually, I'm going out tonight, Jeff. I've got a special trip planned. I think I'm going out to Northboro Crossing to get a couple things for my wife. I've got a couple Yankee Swap gifts I have to get. Um, and then, as you and I have talked, I've got a couple joke gifts that I, I joke to gifts, funny, haha, kind of joke. Yeah, gifts. Yep, yeah. To really mix up the the Yankee Swap. Now, again, we're not going to be showing this until after it'll be on the TV after uh, Christmas on on the radio. So I think we're safe to talk about what we're what we're planning. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I as long so, as no yeah. one leaks this out, uh, uh, Jessica, Doctor Z. As long as you guys Looks don't like leak this out, Bob Z's are, lips are sealed over there. <laughs> I'm getting my wife a new car, Alexis. Wow, yeah. a yeah. new car. Unless something happens and I and I don't get that, uh, I don't hit that lottery <laughs> that I think of. My, <laughs> <laughs> she actually thought I was <laughs> serious about that. No, I'm I'm just a lowly government employee. I don't I I am not able to get my my cousin's wife many years ago, about 1997. He came home, and uh, after they had dinner, she said, "Let's go out to the garage," and there in the garage was a brand new Saab. With a big bow on it. Wow! You see did those the whole, commercials, yeah, did the whole you know? Big bow and everything. Now, do oh, you get that you from the, do deal- the bow? Do you get that from the dealership, or do they give you that <sighs> if you buy it? Like, all right, I'll tell you what. I'll throw in the bow. Yeah. And now is it like, a deal? Is it a deal know? now? See, you don't no longer around Christmas. You kick the tires. What you do is you look at the bow to see if it's right <laughs> for the car. <laughs> the Under the bow, there's just like a big hole in the, in the like <laughs> roof of the car. Right? The windshield oh, the you don't need right. to see other day. It comes with a bow. You, you know, it's funny. You talk about the uh, the Christmas surprises. This morning, I I was in the uh, the bedroom and I was in the closet getting ready for work. And did you discover? And I, said, I said I was asking my wife, "Come here, come here. I need I, you know I need your help with something. I need your help with something." And she comes in and she's just like, "Oh, there's no Christmas surprise." But I, ne- uh, I needed her to pick out a tie for and me. She I, thought, didn't, I needed something to match. But Christmas she thought, because she's like, what like two weeks ahead. Help? Yeah, like, like two weeks ahead of time. Uh, though? My Very wife is a little Sean. Fun. Well, that's like even <laughs> in the office, right? In the <laughs> office, sometimes Sean will call me and be like, "Hey, can you come down? Can you come down here and, and help me with and a Jeff's project?" And I'm like, "Okay, hey. yeah, this, this is <laughs> the surprise no, party, isn't it?" There is no way Sean's so we, dear. We're always surprised. There's no way Sean's dear wife could find the tie to match the shirt he is wearing. Oh, I, I couldn't find one. She pulled out this green one for those on the on the. Uh, oh, that's a sweater. Oh, I I thought it, Kermit, okay. the Kermit, Kermit Green. That is a very green sweater, but well, you know it goes. goes I really wanted to put a, a red tie on. I to should go be with wearing a red. I have a red sweater at home. I should have wore a red, and we yeah. would really look a little bit garish. But next year, it is yeah, next year. Next year, next year. Darn it. So, um, 
So shopping is planned for tonight. Tonight, yep. Uh, joke gifts? What are you getting for joke gifts? Any, anything good? <laughs> 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 well, like as we discussed, we're going to do the uh, the sock collection oh, yeah, yeah. guild That's right. of America. So we're going to put a shadow box together with a sock of, I think, vanilla ice. So this is, there's a, <laughs> there, here's, so there's a little backstory to this. There is yeah, a, is there is a sock collectors. People collect all sorts of things, right? There, right. You know, and you've got collectors clubs. So people that, that, that collect baseball cards or old books or civil war mementos they, there's kind of like societies yeah. and clubs that get together yep. so there's one such uh and they collect famous people's socks right that's what they collect and so it's the sock collectors <laughs> guild, of, guild america. of america yep s-c-g-o-a yep the SCGOA. I mean, so it's a household name so Just you're getting membership to the SCGOA. yeah with I mean a starter kit that includes so vanilla ice's sock. Vanilla ice's sock, and, and that's a pretty good starter. It's really the gift that sock. keeps on giving because with the membership, you know, you start out with a vanilla ice sock, and then who knows? You, you, next thing you know, you might have. Uh, I've got a cousin in the in the, in the guild, and he's got <laughs> he's got about thirty six socks at home. Yeah, uh, I mean, he's got he's got a Gerald Ford. Yeah, President Gerald Ford. Wow, he's got one of his. Yeah, um, but it would definitely have to be the right foot. <laughs> <laughs> You like that one, huh? He's even right. <laughs> he's he's even writing writing that down. down. He's writing that one down. It would definitely have to be the right. It couldn't be a left foot. Yeah. Well, he's got, he's got, he's got. So he's got some musicians. He's got, uh, he's got. Um, uh, oh, who's the guy that used to be? Uh, Does he have an Elvis sock? Hey, if he had an Elvis sock, do you think he'd be just you know regular guy? Come on, <laughs> he's not. Does he want a Jimmy Stir sock? <laughs> Jimmy, St do you have a Jimmy Stir sock? Uh, we could Are get you one. in a guild? Uh, we can find Jimmy you a Saki? Uh, Are you a Saki? So we, and these are all certified no. socks too. That's the right. nice thing. Right. You know you're well, actually getting it's a bona fide, <laughs> certified, authenticated yep. sock. Yeah. I'll give Jimmy a call. So one of my family members will will be getting the the, the collector sock. That's beautiful. The starter sock. Doom 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 doom. <laughs> doom. Stop. Let me check my sock. I think is that how it goes? <laughs> I, I think it's it's sock collaborate and listen. He's like he's like sock. He's no. He's like stop. No, seriously, stop the music. I got, I got, I got to fix my sock. <laughs> uh, How about so yourself, that's great. Jeff? You're, uh, you're shopping all done? Or well, that I've car, you got the bow on it already? Yeah, <laughs> I wish, boy. That'd be <laughs> nice. Um, well, the so we're, we're, we're doing, uh, yeah, I've got to get some, I've still got to go get it. Yeah. Mentally, though, I've been, that's I've got the, the list part, together. To the I've got the list together. together. So I do have, um, big, big, going to get a new microwave. Ooh. Ooh. That's pretty romantic that's too, good. right? Yeah. That's good. You got to get the one with the popcorn setting. I love the, you know, our microwave has like a popcorn button. So it takes the guesswork out. There's also like a. Well, how does it, how does it, does it sense the curls or, or when it You know, I, I don't know, but popping? it's like a perfect pop. Because we have a popcorn button, but it's like four minutes. It's just four minutes. It doesn't matter if you uh, put in. So it'll burn it if you don't watch it. You still have to be there to know yeah. if it pops. We, we've gone stovetop, to be honest with you. Just, just old fashioned. Here's what you just take a, a, a pot, mm -hmm. put some oil in, some kernels, some, some pop, it, and then a lid, and then they pop. Uh, you put the heat on, and you just shake it a little bit. Yeah. It's fun. It's funny you say that. We have uh, last year's C Christmas swap gift was a whirly pop, which is basically what you said. Uh, it's like a pot, and then it's got a like a crank handle on it, and it spins all the kernels around. Oh, so almost like, like, yeah. like at the movie theater. It's got yeah, that. yeah. That must be awesome. It's all, it is great. It is great. For a Yankee swap one year at a former organization, what we did was an elephant, white elephant swap. Uh, what's, what's well, the that's white basically elephant? how I treat every Yankee swap, but okay. <laughs> is that and it was fun. So that's like gifts no one wanted, right? Gifts no one wanted or things yeah. around the house. And yes, <laughs> Sarah's work is doing that. All right, so speaking of gifts no one wanted, there's the famous uh, uh, Rudolph special, right, with the island of misfit toys there, yeah. right? What's your What's your favorite, uh, do you have a favorite show, favorite holiday show? Man, that's a tough one. Um, I always, like you I got always enjoy... You got Rudolph. Are you talking classics? Cause you, I, yeah, my, the, my, well, my immediate thought went the Grinch. to... <laughs> My immediate thought went to the uh, Saturday Night Live Christmas special. I, I think that's hilarious. Well, okay. I watch it every year. But uh, as far as like a classic traditional one, uh, I don't know. What, what about you, Bob? Do you have one? Yeah. I like, I like the White Christmas. The one Which one's that? Where, where Bing Crosby sings White Christmas. Oh, in, but no, I don't no, know. A little Bing Crosby. But I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. The, 
the name of the. F- well, song. we're gonna be getting the band back together. Have a yes. little show there. And yes. How about you, Jeff? What's your little white Christmas there? <laughs> oh, that's something. Hey, is that about the colonel? They got put on a show for the colonel. He's got the colonel, you know, he's got his business up in Vermont. He's going to be going to help out the colonel. That's right. Yeah, that's that's, that's right. Gene Kelly that's in that. Who's uh, it's it's no, him. Who's it a psychic? Danny K. Danny, Danny K. K. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's right. And, the, and they're on the train with the with the ladies. Yes, they are. Well, that's right. Oh, what are you up to now, Danny boy? Yeah. Yeah. Some friends on a train, huh? Wait a minute, what are you up to now? <laughs> that's pretty good. I've been working on I that I've never one. seen that, but that sounds good. I annoy my family with that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, okay, so uh, how about worst ones? You got any that you really hate? And by the way, I'm a big fan of the Grinch one. I, I love... I you think like that's the Grinch a, Oh, that's a top one. To me, is like a perfect thing. in Charlie Brown, oh, I love the Charlie oh, Brown because it's good. such a good... Uh, take on society a and the materialism of society, right? A friend on Facebook forwarded, they have a statue of the Grinch in the front yard. They and the, and put, the uh, yeah. statue of the Grinch in the front yard and the lights go halfway along the house and then they drop down and go right to the oh, Grinch. Oh, that's good. That's good. And that's, that's good. So he only had to decorate half of the house. Oh, that is good. <laughs> because the Grinch stole Christmas. Oh, I... That's I get it. Idea. It, it. It was neat. It was really neat That's to see that. That's a great that. one. Was it? Is it uh, Burl Ives? Who, who's the narrator for that? No, it's not. It's, it's another classic. Uh, Boris Karloff. That's uh, see. Go. You need to. Can you? Can, hey, you, get a, can you like look into the mirror or something? Because we need to. Uh, I don't know. Jeff, acknowledge the camera. Yeah. There's an occupation for you in the near future. Is doing voiceovers. There's oh, a lot absolutely. of money in the voiceover stuff. That should be. We should highlight that job in on a future. We should we should much. interview someone yeah, a voiceover I'd, I'd like to hear about that job. Yeah, pretty cool. One of the most famous one probably was uh, Mel Blanc. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Are you just gonna rattle through <laughs> like all these? Just keep doing impressions. I just might. <laughs> I, I have a few more on those. You know, here's the here's the worst one. I hate I hate this holiday special. It's so it came out. I think it came out. You know that whole Rankin Bass production. You know, you've got you've got like all that. It's like claymation kind of oh yeah right yes, yep. so you got the rudolph you've got the, the one with santa and and you've got like all like the like the kind of the classic ones we remember as being pretty good they came out with one with baby new year and like the baby new year they make fun of him because he's got big ears and he goes off and he hides and then they have to go find him and they're going through all these like it's like the islands of time or something of time forgotten or time oh, past yeah. no, I haven't seen right that. right yeah. and they've got to get him back before midnight on New Year's, or else the baby New Year won't be there to start the New Year. Yeah, horrible. Just sounds a, like a great plot. Oh, I me. yeah. It sounds it sounds it pretty sounds good. Great. It's, does Ben Franklin makes an appearance? Wow. This doesn't ring a bell. There's like an there's no. like a there's like an evil like hawk or something. No, evil like vulture that's like chasing them and horrible. What's it? Oh, what's it called? Worst. I don't, I don't know. know. You know, maybe baby New Year. Up. We'll have you know, to look it up during the break and yeah. and, and come back to this. Hor- I, I can't tell you how much I'm, I'm repulsed by it. <laughs> it's just, it's just. Re- I think it's like an hour long too. It's not like a short one. It's like, it's like an hour long. So, speaking of of uh, an hour long, our <laughs> show today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> our rant. <laughs> um, today's rant brought to you by. Yeah, Bing Crowder. And, and almost the first quarter is over. Jeez, it goes too quick. It does go too quick. Yep. Uh, we do have a special guest that we're going to uh, to go to in a minute. Yeah, uh, a special yeah. interview that we did. Any holiday traditions that you guys do that that we might want to? Um, hmm. Why don't you think about it? Think about. It. We're going to come back to it. Why don't we now go to? We did do an interview, and this is great. I can't believe we actually got this done. Um, a long time, about six months ago, we had reached out uh, to uh, to the folks at the North Pole to see if we could get an interview uh, with Sands. And of course, as always, this is a busy time of year. Uh, but we were able to, to kind of work it out. Uh, and we also, the nice thing was we had them look at, at you know, the relationship between Santa's work and, and some tips around right. what you could take from that. And uh, this was compiled uh, originally by our good friends over at AOL.com uh, who had put this out there. So uh, we want to thank them for, uh, for helping uh, uh, promote uh, this, the, this topic. So, what, do are you ready to go with it? Yeah. All right. So we're going to show right here, right our right. interview with Santa Claus himself. 
All right, we're here now with perhaps our most famous guest, Santa Claus. Santa, can you hear me? Ho, 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 it's a little noisy here. We're really busy. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, maybe, Sean, let me close the door to the workshop. Sure, Santa, that sounds good. Uh, is it better now, Santa? Better now. Nice and quiet, Santa. Oh! So, so we're recording this a couple weeks early, and it sounds like uh, you're, you're gearing up for Christmas. It sounds like you got the elves working overtime in there. Oh, yes. We, we have about 12, 13 days left, and I'm really busy. <laughs> so I understand. I, I appreciate you taking a couple minutes away from the busy schedule to give us uh, our job seekers a couple job search tips. I can do that. Great, great. So, uh, what do you what do you got for us? All right, uh, you know, I, I was doing an interview with uh, Tom Morrison. Oh, what a nice boy he is! <laughs> Get a lot of presents. He's on the and, nice uh, list. AOL.com, and we have some tips like, uh, you know, some really good things on being able to adapt. Oh, okay. So, yeah, well, I mean, that's right. You've been around uh, what a couple hundred years now. I'm sure you've made a lot of adaption. Uh, a lot of uh, things that you've had to change over the years. Yeah, lots changed technology-wise, toy-wise. Uh, the internet's now available. So now I had heard, in fact, that when you first started, Santa, your elves only had to make like wooden toys and. Uh... Oh yeah, with wooden hammers. We were really busy. It was a little slower process at that time. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So how this would relate to uh, to job seekers is to, you know, there's a lot of new technologies out there, so some of the older workforce, um, you have to adapt. And learn, learn, learn new, new technologies. Skills. So that, I mean, that's a great, that's a great tip. Oh, yeah, Santa. you got stuff like Twitter and Monster and LinkedIn, all that stuff. You really got to know how to adapt to that. You Boy, know. you really keep up on uh, Santa. That's oh, great. up in the North Pole, we hear all about that. <laughs> so, Santa, what, what else? Do you have any other tips? Well, you know, while, while you're adapting, you really have to stick really, <laughs> really stick to your, the best of you. Oh, okay. In order to bring that out, it's really important. Like, you know, I always rely on my reindeers and I rely on my elves to, to really help out with this whole process. Well, that's great. And, uh, and, and as you said, stick to the best of you. I mean, really, it sounds like what you're saying, Santa, is that while... There might be some new tools out there, um, like Twitter and, and uh, Monster and, and use of uh, electronic tools. Uh, you still want to uh, maintain the core uh, element of what you are as a, and what you bring to the table. Right. Really know your core strengths and stick with those. Oh, yeah. And you, really, you really have to know how to bring it out, too, in all the ways so that people really want to hire you. That's good advice, Santa. Thank you. And now, you had some other tips? Okay. You, you really have to remember to research things. Oh, okay. You have okay. to know all about the company. You have to know about really about yourself in order to bring the best forward. Well, and, and speaking of research, I mean, you've got quite a list that you put together uh, every year, I imagine. That's a, you're, you're quite a data-driven organization, Santa. Well, you have to be, you know. You have to know who's naughty and also who's nice. And I, I hear, Santa, that you check that list not once, but twice. Oh, sometimes more than that. You know, those old songs, you check it once or twice, three times, four times. You have to be accurate. Right. I know, right. Sean, you, you wouldn't want to get something that you really didn't want. Right. Well, Santa, I, did, I didn't want to bring it up uh, here in the interview, but there was a case uh, back in 1973. Three. You remember uh, back that far? <laughs> well, I I didn't quite get what I wanted. My parents told me I, maybe I wasn't good enough. I'm thinking maybe you made a mistake on that list that year. What do you think? Oh, oh, oh well, you know sometimes we slip up. Well, I see, to. I'm gonna. But, well, thank you. That makes me feel better because I knew I, I knew I had been good that year, Santa. Uh, yeah, you might find it under your tree this year. <laughs> There you go. Excellent. Excellent. There you go. I could use that big wheel. Oh, that's what it was. I thought you wanted that BB gun. <laughs> I'm afraid I'll shoot my eye out. Uh, the neighbors would be afraid of. That's true. The squirrels. The squirrels would be very, very afraid of uh, dead eye turgeon. Oh, especially up near that radio tower in there. In wow, you really, uh, yeah. They, they wouldn't like you by that radio tower wow. with a BB gun. Santa Boy, knows it Santa all. Santa knows it all, yeah. What, well, data-driven. So do you have a, cu a couple more tips for us, Santa? Uh, 
you, you really have to remember, you know, some people say that I'm about 191 years old. Some people say I'm older than dirt, but <laughs> those are the ones that get cold. Yeah, they're, they're right. right. They're yeah, right. Who right. says that? You know, but, you know, you, you really have to not let your age define you, you know? Oh, right. And, and that, you know, that brings up a good point. At, at Workforce Central Career Center, they have a workshop using your age to your advantage. So I, I, I think uh, some of our older job, seeker, uh, job seekers might want to check that workshop out. Oh, oh I better not let my elves know that. <laughs> Sometimes they have some downtime. And they might end up in those workshops, but they'd be good for them. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, that's true. That's true, absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, now, now um, I think you had a total of seven, so I, I'm missing it. we got a couple more, right? Yes, we do, and then i got to run, you know? Good things to do before that big day. Yes, you do, sir. So, so wh why don't we go over a couple more then? All right. How about you have to be consistent? That's the key thing, you know. I wear a red suit all the time. It's not green. It's not blue. I travel the same room, and I don't deliver a presence on the thirteenth. That's right, and, 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 and you do it and year in and year out. The 24th, I start on that trek the 24th, so by the 25th, I'm back at the North Pole, having a hot chocolate <laughs> with Mrs. Sandman, and then taking a nap. Uh, that sounds nice, and, actually. And, and for, for employers, they're looking for somebody who's consistent. They want a, they want an employee That's who's showing up on time, giving consistent I don't know work. about the red suit, though. <laughs> no offense, no, Santa, no, but, but, but folks might not want to wear a red suit. To you know, they want people anything. to show up on time that come every single day. That's the best. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. All right, Santa, so what's what's the final job search tip you have for well, us today? you have to remember about those people that really know you, about recommendations. That's oh, the key. Okay. You, need, you need people that will sing sing your praises, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> Right, we know there's plenty of songs singing your praises, Santa Claus. So you're, you're saying you should have good letters of recommendation, be able yep. to have a good uh, a good source of, of reference for your uh, potential employer to call and check up on you? Yeah, you know, they're always singing about me this time of year. You know, they think they're going to, if they've been bad all year, uh, I know. And for those that have been good, like Jeff and Sean, Oh, are you getting surprises? This? Well, that sounds that sounds excellent. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's that's great. Yeah, glad to hear we're on the, the nice list this year. Yeah, <laughs> this year. <laughs> yeah, well, I had that one bad year. We, 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 you know, we're moving past it, Santa, right? Yes, we are. You're a good boy. Well, thank you for taking the time to uh, chat with us today, and, and for all the advice that uh, that job seekers out there might be able to get from from the work that you're doing. Uh, and we do want to appreciate the good folks at uh, AOL.com and uh, for, for also putting this on their website, too. Oh, yes, it's been good. And don't forget, I want their cookies and milk. That's true. That's <laughs> right. That's true. Sean, Sean, uh, Sean said he's going to leave you some vegetables. Is that okay? Uh, oh, Rudolph would love those. Oh, uh, there you right. go. That's right, the carrot. All right. Well, thank you again. Merry thank you. Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, thanks. That was, <laughs> that was something. <laughs> Santa, he really is a jolly fellow. Yeah, and knows a lot about job search. And yeah, you know, who would have thought? Yeah. Well, I guess you know you you've been around that long. But Bob was sorry to miss that interview. Yeah, too bad. Tough day to be sick that day, Bob. Yep. Yeah. Maybe next year. Maybe, but I tell you, <laughs> really was a was a uh, a great opportunity for us to to. Get a chance to talk with the big man himself. Yeah, and what an operation he has over there. Incredible. In the North Pole. Yeah. Talk about manufacturing. <laughs> I'll tell you. You know? That's a very big manufacturing uh, operation. Lean. <laughs> Lean 101. <laughs> <laughs> Many uh, skilled workers. That's, that's right. right. That's right. Hey, speaking of manufacturing, you know, we had an opportunity the other day to uh, to actually have uh, a celebration event. Yeah. There was a press conference that... that uh, uh, help to um, recognize the, the efforts and the success of a, of a manufacturing consortium that we had. Right, Bob, down in the southern Worcester County area, we, we had a collaboration of uh, five with five different manufacturers down there, came together with our partners at the Massachusetts Manufacturing Extension Partnership, otherwise known as 
Mass MEP. Yep. Uh, who provided all the training and, and helped us kind of work together with them. And the other the other piece of the puzzle, this whole group was uh, was over at the Career Center down there. And Kathy Joy, the manager, and her team, uh, including Deb Belageron, the, the business service representative, and her team over at the Career Center. So it was really kind of a neat uh, opportunity for us the other day. We, we actually had a press conference down there at Hosted by Incom. And we, we were able to get the Secretary of Labor, uh, uh, Joanne Goldstein, to come out. She was coming out uh, not only to recognize the work of that of that collaboration, which was funded through the uh, uh, grants from the Workforce Training Fund, the state-funded Workforce Training Fund, mm -hmm. which is actually funded through um, uh, funds that come in unemployment uh, uh, through unemployment, unemployment uh, insurance. Uh, insurance by by companies Employers, that pay into yeah. the, the 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 pool, and so uh, the funds uh, uh, funded this collaborative project. And so we had Secretary Goldstein out uh, over at Incom uh, in Southbridge to uh, to talk about that. I think yeah, we have some footage from that, if, yeah, I, if I'm not mistaken. And, and actually, yours truly got up to, to speak. Yeah, we got some words from Jeff. And Jeff, I just wanted to uh, mention. I, I mean, we've we've heard of the Workforce Training Fund. I think we've we've talked about it here. We had Mike Cochran from the state come on and talk about it. But this was this was a, a little bit different in the fact that it was a consortium. A consortium, right? So it was it was a group of companies that came together. And we were able to train, you know, two from one company, three from another, you know, three from another, two, all at the same time, y you know. So a joint training where they where they're overlapping needs, right. we were able to have okay. joint training. So it was really, you know, kind of an interesting model among other things. So you've got, um, in some ways, they're competitors, uh, but certainly they're they're very uh, uh, friendly, being uh, down in the same area, you know, manufacturers. They tend to have the similar needs, right? Similar training needs, and, and really facing similar problems, right? Uh, but it's really neat to have them work together uh, and to work with us as public partners to really, I mean, when you think about it, right, if you if you were to bring in a trainer, especially for smaller companies, yeah, and have a training, a whole day training or, or two day training with three employees. You can't well take that, everybody off the shop floor. Well, that's one thing. And then also, um, you know, that training, you know, you could have had 12 people in the room. Right. So okay. why not maximize it by having people come from other companies to maximize that trainer's time? And so it really is a much more efficient way to, to to organize these things to come together as a consortium so yeah. and, and some of the employers uh noted that the, it was nice to get an idea of how another company might do things so like their their company culture and also it, it was a good networking yeah. opportunity for people yeah and and y you know as as much as i you know i would say maybe one of the fears going in or one of the concerns from the companies might be like geez if Someone finds out things are better at another company. Maybe they're they're, uh, they're apt yep. to kind of go over there, or maybe they're going to learn stuff about our operation that they can kind of use against us or whatever. But what they actually found was that, you know, because they're so similar in, in the way they operate, you, the, the staff a they appreciated being kind of invested in mm -hmm. as staff. Oh yeah, and they felt kind of special because they're able to go to this project and be and be called off the shop floor to to, to be going to these trains and learning their jobs better. But then they also felt, you know, they, in talking to their colleagues, they're all kind of, you know, feeling like they, they kind of deal with the same kind of common problems. And to know that it wasn't specific to their company, right, yeah. it actually helped boost morale and boost their pride in their own operations and their own organizations. So all in all, a very successful project. So we do have some some uh, yeah. some some footage and some. Yeah, I think we, we could probably open up. But Jeff, Jeff kind of uh, addressed the crowd and opened it up. Welcome the crowd. Yeah. yeah, warming up the crowd. Warming yeah. up the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> So, do we want to go to that clip, Bob? Now, as many of you may know, the role of the Central Mass Workforce Investment Board is to bring industry and public partners together to ensure there's a strong workforce within our region. One of the things that we've been hearing about is the need to strengthen our workforce for manufacturing. And so, as a result, we came together to talk about creating a consortium to train staff from different companies in the areas which they had shared training needs. This maximizes public training dollars while allowing smaller manufacturers a chance to access world-class training for their staff. Before I get into discussing the consortium's partners, I would like to thank Secretary Goldstein uh, and, and the staff over at the uh, Workforce Training Fund program for all the support that they gave to our project. I know I think Rob Duncan is here, uh, and I know Mike Corcoran is, is involved with that program as well. So thank you for your support of our of our project, which I believe was the first consortium project to actually get funded in the state. Now, in terms of the consortium's partners, I'd like to thank the Mass MEP for all their guidance and work to help the, to put the project together and for delivering their outstanding training modules. So I know we have some folks here, Jim Gusha 
his hair, Karen, his hair as well from Mass MEP. Uh, also, Dick Ayers did a lot of work on the project along with Leslie Parody uh, and all the staff under Jack Healy's direction over at, at the Mass MEP. I'd also like to thank Kathy Joy, who is the Director of Workforce Central uh, in Southbridge, uh, as well as Deb Belageron, the Business Service Representative, for, for the work that their team did uh, to help guide the project and also for hosting many of the trainings that were performed as part of the consortium's efforts. And I, and I do want to echo, uh, Michael had mentioned, uh, Phil Nidri back there in the corner, uh, who did a lot of the work to organize the logistics of the trainings and, and uh, helping ensure that the attendance was, was right for the, for the training session. So really kind of corralled all the different pieces. And I think after this project, you're now certified to, uh, to herd cats in the Tri-County area, from what I understand. Most of all, though, I'd like to, uh, to uh, thank the employer partners. We initially reached out to, to a lot of different companies to talk about this shared training concept. And, you know, not all were very enthusiastic about it. Some were a bit skeptical about it. And so these five companies stepped up to give it a try with us. Now, I know there's some folks uh, representing the different companies here, so I'll, I'll give a, a call out. We have Steve Layton, president of HT Machine Company. There we are. Uh, Jocelyn Matulas from Swiss Turn USA. Uh, along with Michael, we have Mara Grossman, the other staff here of Incom, of course. Uh, Robert Ray uh, from A&M Tool and Die. Uh, Mark Berry and Gary DeGroat from GNF Industries. So again, thank you for all the work that you did uh, on the project to make it such a, such a success. The consortium was scheduled to go. The project was scheduled to go two years, but once we got the ball rolling, we were we we're actually. Uh, uh, able to accomplish it in just over one. And the results have actually been pretty amazing. Now for the state's investment of a little more than $100,000, the project helped companies reduce their scrap, their, uh, their rework, and their returns while increasing sales. The project included 341 training slots and over 140,000 total training man hours during the life of the project. Um, another aspect that was great to hear about was that the companies report an increase in staff morale, which was something that was above and beyond the, the measured metrics that we had. And the project is also uh, on track to meet its anticipated long-term goals for job creation, retention, and promotions. Uh, as I mentioned, um, it was a success in terms of staff morale, and all the uh, five companies expressed interest in continuing uh, with the Workforce Training Fund program in the future, one branching out of their own and the other four being a part of a second phase uh, of a consortium project. In fact, as word spread about the consortium's success, uh, others had wanted to, to come on board, and, and I'm happy to report that we've had such strong interest in submitting a second round uh, that we've broken the project into two separate projects with uh, 11 total companies taking part. So expanding from five to 11 companies and breaking it out into two. So Rob and Secretary, if you're out there putting a plug in now, that it'll be coming your way very soon. Uh, uh, also for our partnerships effort, the consortium was named a 2013 Workforce Partnership of the Year by the Mass Workforce Solutions Group. So in closing, the project was a great example of what can happen when the private sector and public sectors work together. I would certainly highly recommend it to other companies that are out there, either on your own or as part of a consortium effort. And the CMWIB uh, and our partners stand ready to help you make that happen uh, if, you, uh, if you desire. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we're laughing here. Jessica behind the, the camera uh, highlighted the fact that I stumble over. <laughs> high, I thought you did a great job. Recommend. Highly That's a tough one. That's that a tough is, series. I do ones. have a, a, almost like that cadence, like, a, like you were saying. A, a cross between Obama and Kennedy there. You started out, yeah. The yeah. project had good work. That's how we're doing it, <laughs> right? That's like the Obama. Yeah. And I also have a bit of uh, the Kennedy twang every once in a while. A little bit. I'd like I to uh, thank all the partners of the consortium for the for their hard efforts uh, on this project. <laughs> yes, we have a, a question out there yeah, from the New York Times. Bob's just shaking his head. So, so yeah. good, good job, good job with that. Yeah, interview. you know, yeah, I'm nice. not the, I, you know, I, I, I very much enjoy the inner interplay here behind the microphone, uh, you know, but, but not a huge fan of, of, you know, 
public speaking for me is something I kind of have to work at. Yeah. Well, I, th- I thought you did a great job. And I, I uh, actually had a chance to sit down with Secretary Goldstein for a couple minutes to talk about the Workforce Training Fund and um, how employers might be able to utilize it. So this is uh, Secretary Goldstein of the Executive Office of Labor and Workforce Development for the state of Massachusetts, Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Hi, we're here now at Incom Inc. in Southbridge, Mass., where we've, uh, we're joined now by Secretary Goldstein, the Secretary of Labor. Uh, we just had a press event on the Workforce Training Fund, and uh, Secretary of Labor has, has uh, offered to give us a couple thoughts. So, the Workforce Training Fund, can you tell us a little bit about how that works? Sure, I'd be happy to, but first let me just say congratulations and thank you to Incom for uh, being a successful recipient of a grant and for hosting us today. So the way the Workforce Training Fund works is that every employer who pays into the unemployment system also contributes $8.40 per employee per, per year into a fund which is used to then train employees of the employers. So this is a, this is a pool of funding that employees are already paying into. Yes, it's totally funded by employers. Um, the fund has now become a trust so that the funding is secure and carries over from year to year if necessary. And there's already been some um, programs through the Workforce Training Fund, so what, what would make a program successful? So what would make a program successful is when the employer uh, contributes and is committed to the program and the employees are committed and obviously we uh, provide funding as well. And the purpose can start from uh, helping employees to learn English as a second language, uh, particular to their industry, uh, or lean training, uh, or advanced manufacturing training. There are all kinds of training that can be provided to help incumbent workers uh, learn new skills, to help the employer be more successful in the local and global economy, uh, and to further the uh, employment situation in the Commonwealth. And are there any uh, eligibility requirements for employers? Do they have to be meet a certain size or be in a certain industry? They do not have to be a certain size or in a certain industry. They just have to be an employer who contributes into the fund. And that is true for uh, virtually all private sector employers. And I understand there's three different types of the, pro- of the workforce, tra- workforce Training Fund program to meet the different needs. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So the, the most uh, comprehensive grant is called the general uh, training grant and that's available to employers and it can be up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars we also make that available to consortium uh, employers Mm -hmm. so particularly for smaller employers who don't have the capacity or the resources to do uh, training on its own Uh, an employer can apply with colleagues even competitors to provide training uh, in order to uh, have a big enough nucleus of employees to train. So that's the largest and most comprehensive grant. Mm -hmm. There are also express grants which are provided to employers and they tend to be uh, a a ready-made product and not customized to the employer Um, and so they're of a smaller amount. And then the last one that you mentioned is called the Hitchie Grant, the Hiring Incentive Training Grant. And that's available to employers uh, when they hire an individual who has been unemployed for six months or longer, or is a returning veteran. And that grant provides up to $5,000 per employee, new employee for training. And they've all been very successful. And, and during the press conference, they, they mentioned that under your direction, um, the Workforce Training Fund has become a lot more streamlined of a process, easier to get to. I think Senator Brewer even mentioned um, a couple of years ago, prior to you being uh, Secretary of Labor, that there were no applications from Central Mass. Can you talk a little bit about what, what you've done to streamline the process, make it easier? Sure, I'd be happy to. So um, it actually is one of the things that I'm most proud of uh, in my tenure as Secretary that we have made the Workforce Training Fund more accessible to employers in a variety of ways. Uh, we now have, as we, I mentioned earlier, consortium applications to help small businesses. We also now have rolling applications. Uh, there used to be a fairly rigid uh, deadline for employers, and if you didn't make it, you had to wait for the next round, and we accept applications every day of the year. Uh, We also have streamlined the application process to make it easier 
and we provide more technical assistance to employers if they are uncertain uh, or have trouble figuring out how to apply. We've also made sure that the grants go to businesses throughout the Commonwealth, not in any one particular geographic area and in all industries, and we've tried to make it uh, as broad a program as we possibly can. Well, it's refreshing to see that we're trying to make the process easier for uh, private sector to team up with government. Yes, it is really a very successful example of public-private partnership, and we are, we are very thrilled that we have so many companies interested, and we're able to train employees to do their jobs better and provide them with more skills for the future and to make sure that Massachusetts stays current and competes in the global economy. And, and just real quick, um, for, for an employer who's kind of teetering on the edge, they, they maybe hear about this program and think, hey, that might be great to go after because we paid to it, we paid through it through the uh, unemployment insurance, like you said. Um, what, do you have any advice for them? Yes, I would say call us and we will be happy to assist companies. We uh, answer every phone call. We help every employer who's interested. Uh, the number they can call is 617-626-7100, and we will direct them to the uh, person who can help them the best. Well, Secretary Goldstein, thank you for taking a couple of minutes to talk to us today. Uh, we appreciate your help, and um, thank My you. My pleasure. It's been, it's been wonderful. Thank you. Thanks. Well, that was good. That's a great, uh, a great job uh, interviewing the Secretary. It's great that she took a few minutes to, to talk to us yeah. about the working lunch. Yep. Yeah. And I know that... Uh, you you have another interview that we did with yeah it's i mean so if if, if employers are, are thinking hey i you know i pay into this this fund it might be something i'm interested in i also did sit down with uh michael Deterando, who is the ceo at income which is the the employer that hosted us for right. the press conference and a great to local get, manufacturer yeah and and just to get uh his perspective on it and and you know have his thoughts on it pick great. his brain on it so we're joined now by michael Deterando, the ceo of Incom inc how you doing today michael I'm fine. How are you? Doing all right. So, Mike, uh, Michael, I'm sorry. Uh, could you tell us uh, how you heard about the Workforce Training Fund? Well, we have a strong relationship with Mass MEP, uh, who uh, got us involved and introduced us to the Workforce Training Fund and encouraged us that we were a, a company who could significantly benefit from this fund. And can you tell us a little bit about how you did benefit from it? Sure. Um, we uh, trained a significant number of our employees uh, in certain skills that helped to advance uh, uh, their ability uh, to, uh, to manufacture the products that we make. Uh, we are a domestic manufacturer but a global supplier and the challenges are, are eternal to be able to uh, do things better, faster, quicker, more efficient and more competitive. Uh, so it's really critical for us that uh, we need to continually advance the skill set of our workforce to be able to, to keep up with the, uh, the global demand. And challenges of, of global competition. And with this with this grant, you were part of a consortium. So there were four other employers uh, that teamed up with Mass MEP and the Workforce Investment Board to, to carry out this this grant. So what, what were your thoughts on, on doing, a, doing it in a consortium model? Uh, we're actually very in favor of doing a consortium model. Anytime you can add critical mass to a program that you're working on, you kind of uh, assure that it has, it has uh, enough basis to, to be successful and to, uh, to endure and make sure things go through uh, smoothly because you know as, as things arise for one company or another you never know what the economic conditions might be but uh, but when you have a group as big as the one that we have uh, the training goes very well um, you learn new people I'm sorry you, you meet new people yeah. you learn new things and and when you learn concepts that apply to your business it's it's very uh, applicable and appropriate however uh, also seeing how those concepts apply to maybe somebody else's business Business, helps you get a more fundamental understanding of what it is that you're trying to learn and so so in, in incorporating other companies and other products into uh, into the model really I think gives a, a more diverse and well-rounded education and you also get a piece of networking and you get to see kind of a peek into somebody else's shop their their uh, culture workforce culture I lie if I said we don't uh, that we've never stolen little tricks and techniques from uh, uh, some of the companies that we've always gone to see every every tour I've ever been on uh, or every uh, company I've ever spoken with you always learn something uh, clever that they've come up with and, and ways to solve problems or deal with things that you didn't think of in the past so it's always a good thing and it sounded like it was a big success in, in the press event they, they mentioned that you guys had met your goals that you had set for two years in one year 
Yeah, it, it's uh, like um, anything else when you when you set down this path and you invest resources, both time, money, and, uh, and, and people resources, you hope that you achieve the, the goals that you set out to achieve. And, uh, and the fact that, that we uh, did it in one year really uh, is a testament to the program itself, um, to the, the companies that were involved, and to the uh, other organizations that uh, helped facilitate the program as well. So uh, uh, it, was a, it was definitely a group effort. And for, for employers and businesses listening, um, is this something you would recommend? Is it something that's going to take a lot of time and it's not going to be worth the effort? What do you think? Uh, it's something I highly recommend. It's always challenging. You know, we always try to put budgets together, and uh, there's never a lot of room in a budget uh, to be able to, to say, let's do some workforce training. Um, the fact that it, it's matched funds uh, from the state uh, really makes the decision easy to say, yes, okay, this is something that uh, uh, makes a lot of sense for us. It will pay us a return in the long run. Uh, and, and uh, you know, just we need to make the commitment to do it and, and do it well and, uh, and, and continue to, to advance our workforce. That uh, um, it's, it's challenging to, to justify both the time and the money up right. front. But once you do it and once you've done it, uh, you look back and you say, boy, that was really money well spent. And it, it, it's a real, um, it's easy to see that, that income has really utilized this and believes in this program because I actually found out today that you guys are uh, applying for another workforce training fund. We are. Uh, the first one has gone so successful for us, and uh, um, uh, the benefits that we've seen from it uh, go beyond just dollars and cents. You know, having a, uh, having the ability to continually train our employees and give them higher skills and uh, advanced uh, abilities and, and j to be able to do new things and participate in ways uh, that they hadn't done before really uh, it significantly improves the morale of our organization, and, and once we tie that all together, and, and we're all going in the same direction um, as a company, uh, I'm I'm very pleased that our company is is uh, is uh, has the best morale that I've ever seen. Uh, it's it's very very high, and our ability to solve problems uh, is better than it's ever been. So um, it, it's it's might be hard to pin down the exact value of the program as uh, if I had to put a dollar value on it, uh, but the intrinsic value of the benefits that we've gotten from it are immeasurable and, uh, and something that are very obvious to anyone who's, uh, who's been inside these walls for, uh, uh, for 20 years. Well, Michael, thank you for uh, taking a couple minutes to talk to us today, and also thank you for uh, allowing us to get into your beautiful facility here and hosting us for uh, the press event. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you very much. We're glad to have you, and we're very proud of, uh, of our organization and our facility, and uh, we look forward to uh, another successful grant. Just to, to kind of wrap it up, a great event. Yeah. Called earlier in the week uh, over at Incom to uh, celebrate the success of that uh, of that consortium project. So, another event that we were involved with and that we had talked about uh, last month um, that we had spotlighted was that there was uh, going to be a screening of Robert Reich's uh, uh, movie Inequality for All. It oh was yeah. set to happen this past week. Yeah, Patricia uh, was on the show last. That's month. right, but yep. uh, uh, Miss uh, Yancey, Patricia Yancey from the NAACP. She's uh, her and the. Um, League of Women Voters uh, oh. were putting on that event over at the Worcester Public Library. It had to be rescheduled, however. There were oh, some technical okay. glitches to the movie and, and, and getting that set up. So it's tentatively rescheduled for uh, Wednesday, January 17th, again at 6 p.m. over at the Worcester Public Library. So it's it's not confirmed. I, I believe it's it's penciled in for that. So. And uh, our very own Jeff Turgeon is on the speaking well, panel, I, I understand. Brag, but they did ask me to be on the panel. <laughs> Yeah, so um, and it's a, you know it's a really um, uh, interesting. Uh, I haven't seen the movie yet, oh, okay. so part of this is to kind of react to what we see in the movie. The movie's not out yet, uh, but I have seen some of his lectures that are that are out there on, uh, you know, on the internet. And uh, he's a he's a really amazing uh, economist. Of course, he was the I believe he was the labor sec no the uh, secretary of commerce maybe. Okay, who. who do you know of any other people that are on the uh, the panel? Did you get to meet any of them or know who else might be on the panel? Well, uh, there's someone from, from the League of Women Voters. Uh, there's a labor uh, representative and uh, and someone else. I, it kind of escapes me now. But, um, you know, some, some interesting, uh, you know, d kind of a diverse panel there. Yeah, so. sounds like a cool event. Yeah, it should be. So, again, that's January 17th. It looks like it's going to be rescheduled to... Now, I do want to take some time to get to, I want to make sure we have time to get to, uh, we had 
uh, as we normally do about this time of the show. Uh, uh, some some writers come come in and, and seek some advice from us. We, oh yes, yep. The, what do we call it? Mail the mailbag. The so mailbag. So again, listeners and viewers, if you have questions that you'd like us to answer, uh, you can email them to us at theworkinglunch at wcuw.org. Um, and then every show we, we pick one, or sometimes two, to, to highlight and answer. Mm -hmm. So this month we have one from Jason in North Brookfield. And Jason writes, I have become very frustrated with my job search. I send out my resume and cover letter to apply for jobs, and I never hear anything back. Very common these days. Am I, am I doing something wrong? Mm -hmm. I feel very frustrated and stressed. And we get that all the time. It seems like more and more the human element yeah, is being taken away. Yeah. And part of it, too, is in fairness to, uh, to employers is, you know, if you're dealing with 120 applicants for a job, right. you, and you're, especially if you're a smaller organization, you might not have the capacity to email back something to email everybody. back or to mail back or call to call or yeah. whatever, yeah. just letting them know what their status is. And, right. you know, unfortunately, of that 120 Applicants, you, you know, you might be picking out a handful, right, right. To, to call back for an initial screening or interview. So so that means, you know, approximately 110 right. um, out of that 120 applicants may never hear anything. Right. And, and it's good to highlight that that's something that a job seeker really can't control. They can't control the fact that somebody's not going to be emailing them back for every every job they right. apply I to. I think, I mean, the thing they can might control. be sort of analogous to... Um, uh, you know, there, I forget which, which movie it is, uh, where, you know, it's like someone meets, like a man meets a woman or, or, or meets someone romantically, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and tries to hit it off and then calls and, and doesn't get it. Oh, right. Again, and yep. it calls again yep. and it calls again, right? Right. A at some point you really, you, you really, you, you know, you're actually pushing them away. Right. Right. So kind of analogous to that, you don't want to turn an employer off by calling, Hey, did you get my application? You know, where's that? Where's that? You know, y y so there's that that tension there. You know that that push and pull. You you d you don't want to be kind of hounding them, right? Yeah, or seen as someone that's perceived as kind of going over that line. So. And the other thing I noticed about Jason's emails was what well, email was that he note he noted a lot that he was frustrated and very stressed. Seemed like he was really that's having a time. And that is very common. And, and I think attitude is a big thing mm -hmm. uh, when applying for a job. You got to keep that positive attitude. Um, I think employers like to see a positive candidate and. You know, I, I think we at Workforce Central have recognized yeah. that job search can be very stressful. So one of the newer workshops that uh, is being offered is the uh, stress reduction workshop. Which, you know, sounds like it might be, you know, kind of an extravagance or something. But, uh, you know, a lot of the folks that, that we see at the Career Center, uh, you know, there's financial uh, pressure. Uh, there's the, the, you know, if you look at even like health outcomes and, and you know, the stress of being unemployed. Right puts on a family, not just financially, but emotionally and, and relationship-wise and all these stress, right? That, that kind of, so if we can help them deal with some of that, even just, right. you know, some simple things like, like taking time to breathe and to, and to, to visualize yeah. whatever. And one thing to think about too is, is while for that job seeker, putting in that application or going for that interview or, 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 or you know, replying to that job um, uh, posting, Maybe one, uh, you know, maybe number 106, y you know, it might be the 106th time they're doing it, you know, that, that month or something. For that job and for that employer, that's the first time they're, that's the one and only time they're interacting yeah. with you. Yep. So you've got to treat each one as the one and only exactly. and not one out of like a thousand, you know, like, right. oh, I'm doing it again. You know, I'm calling you, I'm putting in my, my application because to them, it's the one and only. Yep. And that's your chance, you know, your opportunity to make a, a first impression, right? So if job seekers are interested in that workshop, the stress reduction workshop, or any mm -hmm. other other uh, workshops that are offered for free at the three uh, Workforce Central Career Centers in Worcester, Southbridge, and Milford, um, they could visit the Career Center. They can also find it online, mm -hmm. uh, Workforce Central MA. And they should know that before, uh, you do need to become a member of the Career Center in order to take advantage of the free workshops and the resource room and other uh, uh, guidance and support that you can get there. All the services are offered at no cost, yeah. but you do need to go through an orientation, right. which is free, and and then become a member, which again is is at no cost to, right. to folks. So it, it's really takes a little time to do it. It's beneficial to go through those steps too as a job sure. seeker because you learn about all the different workshops and programs that the career center offers. Yeah, I mean, quite frankly, one of the things that, that we're that we're looking at is the fact that there's so many services and so many programs and projects happening. Yep. That that orientation 
can be a bit overwhelming, quite frankly. Right. So how do we much simplify it? How do we, yeah. you know, give them the information in a way that that uh, you know they can kind of kind of process. Uh, because there's just so much stuff out there, and of course, some people come with some issues that that are more relevant to them. Yep. Some parts of the, that orientation is going to speak to them more than others. So, but we do, um, you know, want folks to get involved and and uh, and take advantage of the services that are available at the career center for them. And so, Doctor Doctor Z has given us the the high sign. <laughs> Doctor Z, did you want to take Looks a like station break? A, did you want to do a, a quick? Uh, no, that's all right. Well, I think we can continue. <laughs> Can you can you give us a little? You're watching. You're listening to the the working lunch with that with that dulcet tones of of the. Oh yes, you're listening to WCUW, ninety one point three community radio right here oh, in that's Worcester. That's, that's nice. good. That's good. So so actually that I brings up a point. I was thinking I was thinking earlier today. We need to come out with some sort of closing. You know, like thanks what? for making this, and we all go a oh, working lunch. You know, like some that's sort of closing. Good. Like yeah, because we have the opening. Montage and yeah, stuff. we have a we have a closing uh, song, but I think almost we need like, like a, a Ron say yeah, classy thing. Exactly, we need something like that, a sign off. But I think today, what we'll end with a little seasonal. I think we'll pick Sean's favorite wow. Christmas song to end. I, I, beat up, I beat up. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, Uh-oh. Sean and I have been practicing <laughs> a new classic, uh, a new classic. Okay, that we were we were thinking about doing, but we still have a few minutes, don't we? No, yes, yes, we do. About that many. <laughs> that would be four, if I've counted fingers correctly. Four, four minutes. So, on any holiday traditions in your family that that you think were holiday traditions? Doctor uh, Z, Jessica, holiday traditions. Where's ha- m- whoop. Go holiday ahead, traditions Z. for us, and uh, of course, any of the Eastern European uh, Roman Catholics or Orthodox. It's Christmas Eve is what it's all about. And the family and extended family get together Christmas Eve. And do you do like midnight mass or is uh, that part afterwards? Of it? Afterwards, but prior to that, it's uh, some of the traditional. Do you open f- gifts or maybe one gift? Oh yes, we open gifts and uh, exchange gifts, and we exchange bread and have a toast, and then uh, have a wide variety of foods. Bob, do you do Vigilia? Is yes, that, is it's that called Vilia in some parts of Eastern Europe. Your par Vigilia, yes. That's and, that's, and that's like Christmas Eve. Is it's that Christmas Eve. Uh, the Italians uh, have their Christmas Eve, in which basically a, a lot of us follow the pre-Vatican II, in which we uh, have a lot of fish, different oh, fish yeah. dishes for that. Are there any other parts of that tradition, aspects of that tradition that... No, and then that sounds wonderful. The kids, yeah. Yeah, that sounds, it's similar. I mean, uh, I came from a French-Canadian background. We would all... We would all, when I was growing up, we would all go to uh, to my grandmother's house, and then we'd go over to St. John, uh, St. Joseph's Church, mm-hmm. out on Hamilton Street. Beautiful church, still one of the most my favorite churches. Uh, beautifully decorated for for midnight mass. And I remember at one point, you know, I was probably about thirteen or so. My parents said, "Oh, you know, twelve or so. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna do something." To, and it was like all the kids kind of uprise. No, that's a tradition. Yeah, you know, you don't we gotta, break yeah. Tradition, right? yeah. So. It's just a beautiful, uh, and just it's great to celebrate. So, so similar to that, although we, we did one gift and then saved the rest. Well, of course, you know, not being a Vigilia family <laughs> or whatever, not, not having that specific tradition, Santa would come to our house a little bit later in the night uh, yeah, after right. we'd been sleeping. Yep. Yeah. So, and, uh, yeah. So, uh, any, yeah, it's uh, nice any, to hear yeah. holiday shows. Uh, my mom's actually starting a new one this year. She... Got all of the old, uh, all of our old video tapes, and she she got them put onto DVD. So oh, that's great. we're gonna You'd do like a, a a home movie night there. We're gonna pop some popcorn and watch all the old. That's great. All the old Magali uh, films. <laughs> so this should be <laughs> a lot of say it like that. Well, there, there must be a lot of weird stuff on. Yeah, there, you know, I, you like know what? The, hey, show them what you got for Christmas, and you like hold up the gift, and you like. I'll tell you, it, it's it in a way, it's it makes me kind of melancholy, kind of watching that because I, you know, you see the relatives that have passed on. Yeah, you that's see, true. It's you true. know, you you know, you see uh, stuff. So, hate to interrupt the reminiscing, but I guess it's time to wish all the folks out there a very merry Christmas and, and, happy, and holidays. happy holidays, yes, for uh, especially for for uh, those of other faiths that might be uh, having their own holiday traditions. We we wish you all the best this holiday season. So, w- are, are we gonna are we gonna are we gonna take it out with? Why don't we take it out with Sean's favorite? Uh, All right, favorite. Happy holidays, Happy everybody. Happy holidays. holidays. holidays.